Well, ladies and gentlemen, my have a your attention, please. Our session is about to begin. Please have a nice seat. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to International Webinar Artificial Intelligence Research and Global Academy in Saudi Arabia, South Division 2030. I'm Ripto Mukti Wibowo from Belajar Berbagi ID, your host for today, and my partner, Muhammad Ardana, student from Syariah Department, King Abdulaziz University. Hello, Mr. Ardana. Can Hello. you be with us today? Uh, how are you today? Alhamdulillah, never better. Thank you so much. So I also would like to greet and thank you to Bapak Badrus Oleh, PhD, from Indonesian Education and Culture Atase in Riyadh, King, Kingdom Saudi Arabia, and also our speaker today, Mr. Wafi Badawi, PhD, from Faculty of Computing and Information Technology, King Abdulaziz University, or FCIT, King Abdulaziz University. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me first to read agenda today. The first, uh, the first agenda is the opening session. Dua, or prior reader, and opening speech from Indonesian Education and Culture, Atace. And the second is the international webinar session. Okay, uh, times for yours, uh, Mr. Ardana, for dua session. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات ويقاضي الحاجات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة عين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وأخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف أنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إن نسألك الهدى والسداد اللهم إن نسألك الهدى والطقى والعفاف والجناء اللهم آرنا حق حق ورزقنا اتباعه وآرنا الباطل باطل ورزقنا جتنابه اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشى ومن نفس لا تشبه ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والهزن والعجز والكسل والجبن والبخل وغلبة الدين وقهر الرجال اللهم إنا نسألك سلامة في الدين وعافية في الجسد وزيادة في العلم وبركة في الرزق وتوبة قبل الموت ورحمة عند الموت ومغفرة بعد الموت اللهم حوين علينا في سقرات الموت والنجاة من النار والعفة عند الحساب يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبا على طاعتك اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلت سهل وأنت تجعل الهذا إذا شئت سهل اللهم يسر ولا تؤسر ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت سميع العليم وطب علينا إنك أنت تواب الرحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله thank you Uh, Mr. Ardana for the dua prayer. So we want to next session. I would like to invite on Bapak Badru Soleh from Indonesian Education and Culture Atas in Riyadh, Kingdom Saudi Arabia. Times for yours, uh, Bapak Badru. Thank you for joining us today. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalatu wassalamu ala syafil anbiya al-mursalin. Sayyidina mulana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Rabbi sahli sadri wa sili amri. Wa ala al-uqtadam milisani ya kukawu qawli. Distinguished uh, speaker, Mr. Rafi Bedewi, PhD, Assistant Professor at Faculty of Computing and International uh, in Information Technology at King Abdullah University. Uh, dear participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me to deliver an opening speech for the international seminar today entitled Artificial Intelligence Research Global Academic in Saudi Arabia in the context of Saudi Vision 2030. I really appreciate for the uh, distinguished speaker, Mr. Rafi Bedevi, PhD, for uh, participating as a speaker for today's conference, today's seminar. Dr. Bedevi is uh, among top uh, lecturer, assistant professor at uh, King Abdulaziz University, the top university in the Arab region, ranked 106 ES World MCC ranking this year. I also thanks to Mr. Ripto Mukti, uh, founder of Belajar Berbagi ID, PhD student at Faculty of Computing and Information Technology at King Abdulaziz University. Distinguished speaker, dear participants, this seminar has uh, some important points for us. Firstly, it opens our understanding of in the artificial intelligence, the current trend in computer science, information technology, and digital world. Artificial intelligence contributes to developing vision 2030 Saudi Arabia in all sectors, such as tourism, education, economic development, and all sectors. Hopefully, this seminar uh, strengthen the opportunity among universities in Indonesia uh, and King Abdullah University, especially for cooperation, especially in this sector. This September uh, 2023, inshallah, uh, 15 rectors, deans, and heads of College of Computer Science and Information Technology from Indonesia will visit to develop cooperation with King Abdul's University, especially in computer science. The cooperation on teaching, research, education, including exchange of professors and students. This seminar will also con contribute for in, in perspective for diplomatic uh, relationship between Indonesia and between the Republic of Indonesia and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, especially uh, for people and people-to-people uh, -people, uh, cooperation, people-to-people -people, uh, partnership is important uh, contribution for developing a uh, diplomatic relationship between two countries. In liberal international perspective, artificial intelligence, computer science, and information technology are a soft power for Indonesia and Saudi Arabia, and also the Muslim world. Lastly, uh, I uh, congratulate for, for the host and especially for speaker and participants and good luck for the seminar today and hopefully uh, we, we are uh, looking forward for other uh, forum uh, developed by uh, students and also lecturers from King Abdullah University and also uh, the result of cooperation between King Abdullah University and Indonesian Academia. Thank you very much. Good luck. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. From bottom to my, our heart, uh, we want to thank you so much to our uh, atase Indonesia, atase culture, uh, Indonesia education and culture atase in Riyadh, Bapak Badru Soleh for opening session. Thank you for the next session or for the next session, we want to invite uh, Mr. Ba Wafi Badawi, PhD. Hello, Mr. Hawafi Badawi. How are you today? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum. Hello, everyone. 
thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's really in uh, in your time. We want to determine your time and your activity. It's uh, not good, I think, because we know that you have a hectic uh, uh, time and really busy. We know that we want to uh, really thank you so much for joining us today and share about the Saudi Arabia AI Research Initiative. Thank you so much. Uh, so time for yours. Uh, previously, uh, before we starting, I want to uh, give you uh, uh, to participant roles. Please mute your microphone, and if you have question, you can ask in a comment uh, in a comment channel or in you can uh, raise hand after the speaker finish the presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wavi Wadawi. So time is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassid li amri wa ahlil uqdata min thani yafqahu qawli. First of all, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I just want to say it's uh, my privilege and honor to speak to you all today. Uh, and I'm very happy to be meeting uh, all of you and especially uh, His Excellency the Tashay from the Embassy of Indonesia in Riyadh. Um, I know we're meeting online, but still the feelings are there, yeah, alhamdulillah. Uh, so before I begin, uh, as uh, my good friend Ripta has mentioned, today's topic is about Saudi Arabia's AI research initiative. Um, uh, but also we'll be talking about studying in Saudi Arabia and in King Abdelaziz University. Uh, so my name has, uh, has been mentioned, Wafi Bey, PhD. I'm an assistant professor in the Faculty of Computing and IT at King Abdelaziz University in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Um, so just before I begin, I just wanted to give you some background about myself. Uh, so I'm what's called a third culture kid. And that just means that I lived and I studied in different countries. Uh, one of the countries actually I lived in was uh, Indonesia. I was studying in Jakarta because my dad was working in the Saudi embassy in Jakarta between 1994 and 2000. And I found this is my first, um, how do I say? This is my first school certificate. It's actually when I was in kindergarten. Uh, I studied in the Pakistan Embassy School in Jakarta and you can see the date of admission was 1994, so a long time ago. Um, but after that year, I moved to the Saudi Embassy School. Um, after Indonesia, I moved to different countries, uh, but I, did my master's and PhD in the United Kingdom at Cardiff University, um, where I did my PhD is called Modeling Shared Identity and Reputation Cooperation Systems. Um, okay, so let's move on. So first, I just want to give you some facts about Saudi Arabia and what is Saudi Arabia known for. So whenever you hear Saudi Arabia, I think this is one of the first things uh, that people think about is that uh, Saudi Arabia is the heart of the Arab and Islamic world. Of course, alhamdulillah, yani we are very privileged to be able to assist and uh, receive so many pilgrims every year who are performing the Umrah and they're performing the visitation to the Prophet's mosque. Uh, and also we're very lucky and privileged to be able to host the Hajjis every year. And I hope if you haven't done it yet, that you'll be able to do it in your lifetime, inshallah. Uh, another thing that uh, people know about Saudi is that it's in West Asia, uh, uh, but it also connects three continents. So 70% of the world is actually within eight hours reach of Saudi Arabia. Uh, so that means if you get on an airplane uh, within eight hours, inshallah, you'll be able to reach Saudi Arabia. I think from Indonesia, it's a bit more, maybe nine or 10 hours, but still you get the idea. It's very reachable from everywhere, inshallah. Um, another thing, Saudi Arabia is really, really famous for its football, especially in Asia. Uh, I remember uh, in 2007, Indonesia hosted the World Cup and Saudi Arabia, uh, I mean the Asian Cup and Saudi Arabia, they reached the final uh, in Jakarta. Uh, and also there was a famous match last year, if you remember in the World Cup between Saudi Arabia and Argentina and Saudi Arabia won. Uh, so I can tell you Sa Saudi's number one sport is football. Uh, another thing we're really famous for is our coffee. So this is uh, some Saudi coffee. Usually when we give Saudi coffee, we also give um, Saudi dates with it. So just to give you a feel of the things we're famous for. And of course, we're also famous for having oil. 
Uh, so that's a flavor of Saudi Arabia. Now, uh, also it's really important for me to talk to you about uh, the history of Saudi Arabia. Uh, so something that not many people know is that Saudi Arabia was actually founded in the year 1727, but it's, it was very, very different than what it is today. And what it is today is actually founded in 1932 when our first king, uh, Abd Aziz ibn Abdurrahman al Saud, who you can see the picture of here, uh, he unified the kingdom because the kingdom was 13 different regions and he unified it in 1932. And then the next, uh, there are many, many events that happened between 1932 and 2016. But in 2016, Saudi Arabia announced the Vision 2030 and the National Transformation Program. Okay. So this was announced in 2016. Um, and inshallah, I, I included here 2030 because inshallah, this is when we will achieve the uh, achievements of the 2020 30 program, I mean, sorry. If you just give me two minutes, I just have a call. I don't know. I just have to answer the call and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm really sorry. I'll just be back in two minutes. There, Dr. Wafi, we lost your voice. We cannot hear your voice. Hello? Everyone can hear uh, Dr. Wafi voice? Uh, mohon maaf, Mr. Ripto. Uh, it's gone for two minutes. Yeah, that's right. Beliau oh, ada hajat dalam dua menit. Insya Allah akan kembali lagi bersama kita. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ardana. Oke okay, Bapak Ibu uh, before uh, we want uh, wait uh, sorry our speaker if you have question you can uh, drop question here on meeting chat or you can use feature uh, raise hand uh, tool after the speaker finish for the presentation today you can use uh, Indonesia or English language we can translate if you have question don't worry uh, thank you so much Baik Bapak Ibu sekalian, uh, untuk audiens yang memiliki pertanyaan silakan di drop di kolom komentar setelah pemateri berakhir. Dan jika ada di sela-sela pemateri maka silakan menekan icon raise hand, angkat tangan dan menunggu panggilan dari host. Terima kasih. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm just back. Uh, okay, so that was a brief history of Saudi and uh, some facts about Saudi. So now I want to talk to you about the education in Saudi Arabia and how it is. But, but I'll just give you the recent history and a bit about uh, since 1932. But today in 2022 or 2023, the population of Saudi Arabia is estimated to be at 33 million. Okay, so we are a lot smaller than Indonesia, of course. But 6 million of our, of our the population, they are considered students which is about 18% of the population. And because of this rise in students, of course, this also includes school students, not just university. Um, we have 29 public universities, as far as I'm aware, and 38 private universities. So public universities means they are government universities. And private means that the private sector are the one who has them. And in the year 2030, by the year 2030, I should say, we aim to have at least five in Saudi universities among the top 200 universities in international rankings. As also, as, as you heard earlier from um, His Excellency, the cultural attache, uh, King Abdelaziz University is leading 
this ranking in Saudi at the moment. And we're really aiming to be uh, with among you know top 100, not just top 200. But uh, inshallah, we're working towards that. In uh, 2022, uh, last year, uh, Saudi Arabia uh, participated in a competition called the International Science and Engineering Fair. This competition is targeting high school students, so usually students between the ages of 12 and 18. And we managed, alhamdulillah, to win 17 awards uh, in this competition, including the Young Scientist Award. And in 2023, just yesterday, actually, uh, the competition was concluded, and alhamdulillah, we have managed to increase from 17 to 23 winners. So, and the reason that I'm highlighting these awards is because our vision 2030, which I'll talk about later uh, some more, is really trying and aiming to raise the bar for Saudi Arabia. So we're happy about our achievements, but we want to achieve more and more things. Jadi reviewer atau mungkin jadi notulis, monggo jenengan yang membagi pihak Saya langsung ya, Bu. Sorry everyone, please mute your microphone. Uh, please continue, Dr. Awafi Badawi. Hello, Dr. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I just saw that I'm also, I was also mute, uh, muted. So thank you for that. Okay, so, um, so Saudi Arabia, as I said, is things of education highly important. In fact, you know, our GDP, the government spending, uh, Second highest spending in Saudi Arabia is about education. Okay, and this actually started even before the country was formed as it is today. So in 1927, okay, so a really long time ago, almost uh, 100 years ago, Saudi uh, there were no schools in Saudi, there were no formal schools in Saudi Arabia. So what happened was uh, the government at the time, they managed to find 14 students and they sent them to places like Lebanon and Egypt because Lebanon and Egypt had uh, the best education in the Middle East and it wasn't really far. So here on the, on the right, you can see in 1928, uh, this is the first kind of batch of scholarship students that have been sent abroad from Saudi Arabia to study in Egypt. Uh, so this, uh, they were all studying in Egypt, okay? And almost a decade later in 1936, our scholarship program started to expand a little and Saudi sent some students to Europe. Yeah. Uh, and this kept increasing until around 2006, we had 11,000 students abroad. In 2011, we had 71,000 students abroad. And in 2021, it was estimated to be around 50,000 or a bit more than 50,000 students abroad. Of course, 2021 was the uh, just one year after COVID. So the number is slightly decreased, um, uh, but yeah. So our, our students usually, they go, the Saudi students, they usually go for scholarships in countries that speak English mainly, like the US, the UK, Canada, and so on. Uh, but some of them also go to places in Europe like France and Germany. Some of them even go to Asia like China, uh, Japan, even Malaysia, um, and so on. But at the same time, Saudi Arabia is really happy to be able to offer uh, scholarships to students from other countries, such as Indonesia. Uh, so today I wanted to actually talk to you about that, about opportunities for you to study in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Uh, so uh, last year, uh, Saudi Arabia launched a program called Study in Saudi Arabia, which allows us to give an opportunity to all international students, no matter where they're from or uh, anything uh, to apply at any of the universities that uh, I'll show you in the next slide. Okay, and this allows you to study any major you want, except for medicine. Uh, and you can study in different levels. So if you're interested in Arabic studies and getting a diploma in Arabic studies, you can. If you're interested in just getting a bachelor degree, that's available, master's degree, and of course, PhD or doctorate. Uh, and the type of scholarship that we offer to international students is that we have three different scholarships. The first one is completely free scholarship, uh, a full scholarship. And that means that you don't pay for any tuition fees and you get a monthly allowance. Uh, you will also be getting a 
as the video said earlier, you'll be getting a full accommodation and so on. And then the next scholarship we have is partial. So you might be getting something like free tuition, but you won't get a free uh, housing and you don't get the monthly allowance. And then there's also payment-based uh, uh, scholarships as well. So to apply for these scholarships and to study, there's one website that you have to go to. It's Saudi. Uh, it will look like this. Study in Saudi dot MLE, Ministry of Education, dot government, dot Saudi Arabia. Uh, so this is the website that you can go to to apply to study in Saudi Arabia if you are interested. Now, in terms of what language you'll be studying in, uh, it will be English for scientific kind of courses or majors, like computer science, engineering, it will be mainly in English. But if you are looking to do theory-based majors, like Islamic studies um, and literature studies and so on, the mode of study will be in Arabic. So if you're studying also law, all these things, it will be in Arabic. But if you're looking for things like science majors, it's in English, okay? Uh, and through that website, you can apply to any one of these universities. Uh, these are the public universities in Saudi Arabia. Um, and I'll tell you something, it's actually quite competitive because we only really accept about 5% of the students in the university are scholarship students from abroad. But the Islamic University of Medina, it's a really famous university, Islamic University of Medina, which has this nice logo, they have 85% of their students are actually coming abroad because that university is considered the top university when it comes to Islamic studies in, uh, in the kingdom. Uh, other universities which have scholarship programs that I would also encourage you to look at. Uh, the first one is called King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. It's about an hour, an hour and a half away from uh, Jeddah. Uh, it's a private research university but every admitted student gets a full scholarship uh, and the campus is really beautiful. It's uh, on the seaside. Uh, so you have really nice things that you can do there if you're interested in it, but it's only for research. So they only accept students at master's level and at a PhD level. Another important university in Saudi is King Fahad University of Petroleum and Minerals, which is on the Eastern side of Saudi Arabia, about two hours flight from Jeddah. It's considered a non-profit institute, but they also have some different scholarships and their degrees are usually um, accredited with different universities and different companies. And their um, funding comes from the Ministry of Petroleum, okay, as the name suggests, but they don't just study petroleum and minerals, they also do other courses like computer science and everything, and all their programs are in the English language. Okay, um, so if you had any questions about universities in Saudi or selling in Saudi, uh, you can put them in the, uh, as, as the guys have said, you can put them in the Q&A and we will answer them later on, inshallah. So I'll just move slightly different topic. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you about Saudi Vision 2030. So in 2016, I said earlier, Saudi Arabia announced the Saudi Vision 2030, uh, a new horizon. So the, the reason that we announced it was because we noticed that we're really heavily dependent on oil. Okay. And we know that in the future, we're not gonna be using oil. The world won't be using oil as much as they are today. And at the same time, we wanted to develop and improve our public sector, such as you know, health and hospitals, uh, our education, we want to improve it, the infrastructure, and we also we want to increase the number of tourists that come to the country. Uh, but the main the main thing, as it says here, is to reduce Saudi Arabia's dependence on oil in the economy, uh, develop public service sectors, transform the company into a global investment powerhouse. So if you've actually come to Saudi five years ago. And you come today, you'll see that Saudi Arabia is very different than it was five years ago because of the vision 2030 and we're trying to improve services uh, to everyone that comes over. Another thing, which I guess is not written here in the slide is that you know, the main thing that Saudi Arabia does, as I said earlier in the first slide, 
we like to host, and uh, we're very privileged and lucky to host the Umrah and Hajis who come every year. And we're also trying to improve services for them. And we're also trying to increase the number uh, that are allowed to come in the country because it's such a small space. So at the moment it's limited, but inshallah in the future, we'll be able to increase that number to double and triple the current numbers. But Saudi vision is also really important in terms of education. So as I said earlier, we're aiming to be in the top 200 uh, universities in the world. And we're also trying our best to increase the number of uh, employed people because we have a young population. Uh, I guess 50% of the population is under the age of 30. So we're really trying to make the job market bigger and bigger. Okay? And the way we can do this is by allowing people to go into education and allowing people to study new things. Uh, at the same time, Saudi Vision, um, perhaps you heard of these projects, but some of the big projects that Saudi Vision is responsible for is the NEOM project and a city called uh, Al Qadiyya. Okay. So NEOM is the most famous one and uh, important one in our topic today because Neom is plan is a planned city that will be um, open to the world hopefully inshallah by 2030. Uh, Neom is supposed to be a smart city which means that it's going to be as it says here entirely AI driven. So what that means is that we will be using AI to predict uh, what the people who live there need and what they want. And also AI will be relied on, on things like transport. So we'll have, you know, trains and all that. Public transport will be through AI. The security will be through AI, personal services through AI and so on. Yeah. And in fact, because of that, uh, in its first, when it was first announced, a lot of people imagined that there'll be more robots than humans in Neom. Uh, and we are, you know, aiming to do that. But as you saw, uh, AI is really, really important for us within Division 2030. And as such, in 2019, uh, the government announced the creation or the establishment of SADAYA, or the Saudi Data and AI Authority. And under that authority, we have something called the National Information Center. And we also have the National Center for Artificial Intelligence. All these um, centers, they were developed to support Saudi Vision 2030, and it, they were, and specifically NCAI was there to support the role of artificial intelligence within the vision. Yeah. Um, uh, as I said earlier, you know Saudi Arabia really sees artificial intelligence as something great and something big that will help us achieve our goals to improve our economy to improve our services and infrastructure and so on. And because of that, a lot of our GDP <laughs> is going towards AI. Uh, specifically, we're aiming to contribute uh, and we're hoping because of all this investments that AI will also um, bring money into the country. And they're estimating that AI will contribute $135 million billion to the economy of Saudi Arabia. Um, so this the data and NCAI, they're really, really important to us. And as I said, they were established in 2019. So I just want to give you some of the things that they have managed to do since then. Uh, so of course, you all remember in 2020, uh, the world went through COVID and a lot, of com a lot of countries, they released their own phone applications, which helped us to know um, things like the number of people who have COVID in the country, they also helped us to know about if we have been infected. They also helped us to know about things like if we can get the vaccine and so on. So Sadaya uh, helped the country by producing this app called Tawakkanna. Uh, and it started out as the COVID-19 app in Saudi Arabia. But today, uh, almost three years after COVID, uh, the app moved to something called Tawakkanna Services. And it's actually you know, the number one government app uh, so 
within this app, you get access to a lot of government information and services. Uh, so it moved from COVID-19 specific to general government services app. And one of the things that Saudi Arabia sees as really important is becoming an e-government. So all our government services are done electronically and we don't have to go and visit you know, any ministries or any departments in the government to get things like, for example, our passports. We can apply for the passport online and within three minutes, we'll get confirmation that it's done. And you don't even have to go to the government to collect it because they send it through the post uh, within you know, of one week. Uh, so that's just an example of the government services we have. Another application that Sadaya has developed is called Ehsan. So this is a philanthropy application, which means if you download this app or you go to the website service, you can donate to those who are in need. Uh, so they, usually whenever the government has any donation projects or philanthropy projects, they put it on this application and people go and they, if they want to donate, they can do that so that uh, uh, our donations are monitored through the government. Okay, so that we make sure that it goes to the right people. Uh, another application they developed is called Nusuk. So if you come to Saudi Arabia today and you would like to perform Umrah or you want to go and visit the Prophet's Mosque, usually uh, because we're dealing with millions and millions of visitors, it can get really busy. And uh, so what the government decided to do is to develop this app and you can go and book a specific time or a specific day to perform your Umrah and Prophet Mosque. In this way, we can ensure that everyone safe and everyone is able to perform Umrah comfortably and not at a really busy time. So during Ramadan, for example, people who live in Saudi were only able to perform Umrah once. Uh, in the past, before the app, people used to go, you know, more than once during Ramadan. And this caused a lot of traffic and it caused a lot of um, people to go at the same time which sometimes meant that the police had to send people away because the, the Haram, mashallah, was really full. Okay. Uh, another app, actually, this was only last, launched last week. It's called Adla. Uh, so if you heard of Chat GPT, uh, this is Saudi Arabia's answer to Chat GPT. It's called Adla. So uh, it's an AI model uh, in Arabic at the moment, but I think they're also going to release one in English and other languages. And it helps people generate AI text and so on, similar to chat GPT if you used it. Sorry. Uh, another application that Sadai uses uh, for the government or that they developed, it's called the Stishraf. Uh, and this enables decision makers to analyze big data. So what that means is that the government is, and the citizens are producing a lot of data. And the government is trying to provide services and products for the citizens. So what they do is, is to shraf, allow Sadaya to process and read and clean this data and present it in a way which allows decision makers to take good decisions uh, when it comes to services. So for example, they, they analyze the traffic in the city and then they tell the government, okay, on this route or on this street, we really need some public transport or we need to change the way the traffic flows so that um, we don't get traffic jumps. Another thing, because the country is, gro is growing in population size and so on, uh, Sadaya has managed to develop cloud-based services called Deep, uh, which is similar to what Google offers. But because Google hosts the data in a different country, we don't like that. We want to host our own data because the data of a country is really something sensitive and you need to be secure and it shouldn't be really shared with anyone easily. So Sadaya has managed to develop an email uh, service like Gmail, file sharing services like Google Drive and so on. Uh, this is still something they're working on. They haven't yet released it, but we're hoping in fact as a university to move on to this service in the next few years uh, so that our information is not hosted um, abroad. Uh, another app that they developed is called Furijet. So Furijet uh, is an app which exists to enable citizens to help those who are in need and are detained in prisons. So 
for example, if uh, for low crimes, okay, so some people, you know, unfortunately, they take out some loans from the bank or something like that, and they're not able to pay the fees or the fines. So this app allows other people to contribute and help them out because um, they're in need. Uh, and finally, not finally, actually, there are many, many other applications, but these are just the ones that I wanted to talk about. Uh, but they also have an app called Rogue, which is similar to what we're using today, Zoom. Uh, and this also enables us to you know, keep our data communication in Saudi Arabia and not share it with uh, private companies because we don't know what these private companies are doing with our data. So it's really important for us to develop our own tools that we can use within the kingdom. Okay, so this is just a flavor about Sadaya. Now, if we go back to education and how artificial intelligence is uh, being taught in Saudi education, uh, I know that AI actually, since the last three or four years, has been introduced into schools. Uh, so there's now a course that you take in schools uh, that teaches you a little bit about AI and about the dangers and the benefits of using AI. Within King Abdaziz University, uh, so our foundation year students, these are the first people who enter the university at the age of 17 or 18 or 19. They also have a programming course if they're going into scientific degree and they also study AI courses. Okay, so they get a flavor of what AI is uh, in schools and students also get a flavor when they enter the university about what AI is. Additionally, not at King Abdelaziz University, but there are other universities which are offering, uh, which are offering, sorry, bachelor degrees uh, in AI. Okay, in the past they used to be computer science with a track or a minor in AI, but now they offer a full degree in artificial intelligence. Similarly, in King Abdelaziz University and other universities, you can also take AI as a master program. And of course, if you want to do research in your PhD about AI, you also get support. Uh, but this is informal education. Also, the government is supporting various educational initiatives which offer AI courses to all citizens. So the government has um, different programs which support continuous learning. So this means you don't have to go to university to learn, you don't have to go to school to learn, but you can enter a website online and you can take a simple course and you get a certificate in it. So if you know about Coursera um, courses, it's similar to that, but it's offered mainly to support people who are interested in changing their jobs or learning new skills. Uh, okay. So what are the benefits of studying AI? Uh, for us, it's about getting our market or the people who are joining jobs to be up to date with the latest tools that are available for them. Okay, so perhaps this is a bit older than your time, but uh, before 1999 or before 2000, no one was using the internet when it comes to their work. Okay, uh, only some companies or some people, they were using computers and emails and so on. But after the 2000s, a lot of companies, you know, they have to, it's not something they think about whether or not they should, but they have to learn to use computers. They have to learn to use emails and so on. And today, no work, uh, no job exists without the people who are doing these jobs, not knowing how to use email and computers and so on. So we also believe that in the future, we also have to know a bit about AI, a bit about programming for you to be able to be skilled enough to have a job. So this is why we're, teaching AI in universities and schools and also through these continuous learning programs so that we better prepare uh, the workforce for the future. But there's always a challenge because AI is changing and it needs a lot of investment, a lot of money, and a lot of training um, to ensure that it's available for everyone. And we're hoping to do something about it as well. When it comes to research, uh, it's still something new actually for us, uh, but since uh, Sadaya, as I said earlier, they're the body who's responsible for AI in Saudi Arabia. They have developed uh, some various research labs and projects with different universities in the kingdom. But most notably in 2021, they established a center for, of excellence for AI 
for health sector. In 2022, uh, I told you about this university before, King Fahad University for Petroleum and Minerals. With Sadaya, they established a joint research center for AI. And in 2023, this year, they're planning to establish a center of excellence in data science and AI with KAUST, which is King Abdullah University of Science Technology, which I told you is about an hour and a half away from Jitta. Okay. Uh, additionally, of course, researchers in other Saudi universities are also establishing their own independent AI labs. So this is a lab that I belong to called ASAS. Uh, lab. Okay, so we're just established actually in the last week, so we're still new, but we're also hoping to do some research in AI, uh, mainly for the Arabic language. Uh, so actually, these are all the slides that I have for now, uh, but just to add a bit of information, uh, um, you know, AI, we see it as the future. And it's actually one of the goals from not just Saudi Arabia, but also in G20, which I know Saudi Arabia and Indonesia are part of. Uh, one of their goals is to establish AI research centers and to collaborate on AI research uh, in order to better you know, the lives of uh, everyone around the world. So yeah, so I hope um, that you've all uh, learned something new. And I'm sorry if I talk too quick or but I hope uh, that you know it was a bit interesting and I didn't want to go into too much technical details because I wanted everyone to be able to understand uh, some of the things we're talking about. So if you have any questions or anything, I'll give back uh, the floor to my friend, Ripto. MashaAllah, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Wafi. By the way, that was a very comprehensive presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, after we know about the comprehensive outlook about the AI research and global academic in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Vision 2030, we want to open a discussion section. So now we have come to question, answer, or discussion session. We are glad to receive so many questions from today due to uh, due to time limitation. We are going to select first three questions uh, in the first section. If you have question, you can drop in a comment channel, a chat channel, chatting channel, chatting meeting channel, or question answer tools, or you can use raise a hand. Okay, uh, we want to talk uh, about the first question about the uh, Mr. Bafi Badawi. Uh, the first question is from. Uh, Mbak Or from the Miss Nur Wahida. Bagaimana riset AI dapat membantu dalam pengajaran? Okay, we want to translate here how AI research can help in teaching and can provide, uh, please provide example of implementation that can be applied in teaching. Okay, thank you so much for the good question. I mean, very simply, uh, AI really helps us in teaching because uh, if we're honest, students, uh, you know, they need different ways to study and to learn. You know, we don't expect students who go to lectures to fully grasp the idea of the lecture. Uh, the students have to go back home and they have to learn in different ways. So some students, we consider them as visual learners. So they learn by looking at data and pictures and so on. Some students, they just like to read text and they understand. Some they have to touch or they have to do things practically. So we, we believe that, you know, AI will help us um, better understand the things that we study because AI will have many different tools um, that will help us. So for example, in my class, uh, I help, I give my students some quizzes and, you know, because I have a class of more than 100 or 200 students sometimes, AI helps me to grade those students, uh, especially if I give an exam, which only has multiple choice questions, uh, things like that, then AI is really helpful there. I don't know, hopefully I answered uh, some of the questions. Okay, thank you uh, for the next, uh, for the next uh, question. We, wa we want to invite the participant to use uh, 
right hand to feature our tools. So everyone who want to ask, okay, I want to choose the from the right hand. Uh, okay, we have two questions are from, I will invite the Mr. Mahmoud Isnan. Okay, can you open your uh, mic? Mr. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, first me, I want to say thank you for Dr. Wafi for your presentations. I think it's really interesting. Uh, actually, I have a lot of questions in my mind, but for now, I will go into two questions. Can I ask two questions? Hello? Hello, please go on. Okay. Uh, firstly, uh, my question is uh, regarding about the language language used in uh, Saudi Arabia uh, for studying. Uh, if I am not mistaken, that in your presentation that you mentioned about uh, Arabic language and uh, English for the theory is used uh, Arabic and the practice is used in English. So for me, actually, uh, for the Arabic, I only know the basic knowledge, uh, like uh, for the conversations. So if in that conditions, it, is it impossible? Uh, is it possible for me to apply uh, studying there uh, if I only know the basic uh, conversation in Arabic? And the next question is about uh, the how is the the way to approach uh, the university. Uh, you mentioned about the website uh, in your presentation to apply the, uh, to the university. For me, I wanna actually uh, study there for the PhD level. And my question is, uh, should I approach the potential professors uh, first before submitting my application to the website? or only uh, focus on the application and submit it. No need to approach any potential professor or, or how. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for your question. Can I just ask before I answer which degree you're looking to study? I mean, which major? Uh, PhD. In what subject, I mean? Uh, uh, my previous uh, master is uh, about the focus on artificial intelligence and remote sensing. Okay, so uh, so basically what I said in the, in the slides uh, about the language, if I just first answer that question. So if you're studying a science-based major, uh, such as the one you're about to study, you don't need to know Arabic. So the subjects will all be in English. Uh, so even when I teach my students, because I'm teaching computer science students, I'm teaching them in English only. Well, I don't teach them in Arabic. The Arabic language uh, courses, they're for the Arabic majors. So that means if you're studying Islamic studies, if you're studying Arabic language, if you're studying a law, um, I, I think business administration as well. So those courses, they're only taught in Arabic. But the science courses, uh, computer science, engineering, um, you know, pure science like physics, chemistry, and so on. They're only what? taught in the English language. Uh, sorry, can you? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so for the second question you're asking, for the PhD level, would you need to contact professors uh, or can you just apply directly? Uh, I, I'm not 100% sure. I would prefer if Mr. Rip to answer this, but uh, as far as my knowledge is, you can just apply directly. Uh, and but at the same, but of course, it never hurts to contact the professors. But in Saudi, the PhD program is actually you have to study for I think I believe two years uh, before you start your research. So for that reason, you don't have to email the professors right away because you know when you come here and you study the courses, you'll get to know them and you can choose your professor uh, supervisor that way. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Can you confirm this, uh, Mr. Ripto? Oh, hello. Thank you, uh, Dr. Wafi. Uh, Bapak-Ibu, jangan khawatir ya bagi yang belum bisa bahasa Arab. 
Jadi uh, ada juga pelatihan ya, pelatihan selama satu semester yang ditawarkan dari Arabic Language Institute, di mana ini free, bisa diikuti oleh Bapak-Ibu. Apabila untuk perkuliahan S2 ataupun S3, biasanya menggunakan bahasa Inggris sebagai bahasa pengantar. So don't worry about the uh, language. So for you want to uh, continue for uh, graduate uh, studies like a master or PhD, we use the English language for the uh, for everyday uh, daily conversation and for in uh, lecture also. So don't worry about it. So we want to gonna continue to next uh, question. So we want to uh, invite on the from the raise hand feature. Okay, we want to check from the raise hand. Like okay, for the ladies, we we uh, we choose the Miss Veronica. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Okay, Miss Veronica. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you for the opportunity from uh, Mr. Ripto Mukti. This is my second webinar with Belajar Berbagi ID. And for the Bapak Badru Soleh, PhD. And Mr. Wafi Badewi, Badewi PhD. Uh, I want to ask uh, about uh, joint research uh, between Computing and IT at King Uni King Abdulaziz University and another faculty. Uh, have Have you ever joined a joint research uh, between I, computing and IT and economy or like uh, tax and accounting? And uh, how about how about uh, if um, my University want to collaborate or make um, memorandum of understanding between King Abdulaziz University. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Veronica. So I want to highlight your question that the first slide, computing and economy, the first one, and the second one about the university collaborate. That was. Uh, sorry, it is true, Miss Veronica. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for these questions. So uh, this is also something that I've been thinking about uh, a lot lately about um, collaborative research between different departments in the university, but also between different universities between KAU and, for example, University or Research Center in Indonesia. So what I would um, ask you to do, uh, I'll put my email and you can email me um, with, you know, um, what you're thinking about and I can get in touch uh, uh, with you or I can also direct you to who you can email it. Uh, but I'll just show you, if you go to the King Abdulaziz University, uh, we do have some research groups uh, and it, uh, okay, I don't know. So, yeah, you can see there's a few research groups in the university. Uh, so, uh, but what you can do is if you contact them, uh, usually they have their email here, uh, the Deanship of Scientific Research, and you can tell them like, look, I'm interested in doing cooperative research with you or something like that. Uh, they're, they're able to answer you and direct you to the right people. Uh, but I'll also give you my email and you can, uh, and you can, email me uh, with that kind of idea and I can also direct you. Okay, I'm very happy to help you there. Uh, but yes, we are, we're of course, we're very open and happy to collaborative, to do collaborative research, uh, whether it's a research center or with the university. Yeah. Um, I hope that answers the question. Uh, should we move on to the next question? Oke, okay. so Bapak Ibu, you can uh, send email to DSR, Dian uh, of Scientific Research at kau.edusa.sa. Sorry, and also you can uh, send message to Mr. Wafi Badawi or Dr. Wafi Badawi. He send the email address to meeting chat. So we's gonna to uh, next uh, session with the Mr. Arden. Halo. 
Okay. Okay, now we want to choose uh, the next participant for the question. Okay, Mr. It is a, uh, okay. Okay. Okay, from the Miss Ernie, the preview, Miss Ernie has a, uh, Two question about the U to U procedure. Previously, he he talk um, Mr. Bhavgadawi about the collaboration. So we want to uh, talk about the second question about the how about the AI can detect about the disease, uh, doctor. She has question about the AI. How to detect AI? Uh, AI to detect about the disease. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thanks for the question. I'm not an expert in that area really about the diseases and healthcare but uh, I believe that uh, I mean one of the things that I have read about um, this is a uh, world research it's not just Saudi research is that um, we are using AI to analyze things like x-ray and uh, you know blood analysis uh, to detect these kind of diseases uh, so this is something that you know the world is working on but I don't have any specific details to answer that. So I'm, I'm not an expert in that area, unfortunately. Um, but that's all I can say about it. Sorry. Bu, Bapak Ibu, kita bisa lanjut ke pertanyaan selanjutnya melalui fitur raise hand. So we want to choose the participant from the raise hand tools if you have question. So we want to invite the Mr. Fadi Ka. Irza Putra. Halo. Halo. Oke. Okay. Halo. 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 Oke. Okay. Mister Fadika. Ya, halo. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, ya. Yeah. So, assalamualaikum, uh, dokter. Uh, uh, I have a question regarding the uh, Saudi education, especially for the scholarship. Uh, uh, I also one of the uh, scholarship uh, applicant from Indonesia. I, I I applied for the Master of Computer Science in King Abdul King Abdullah University uh, from 2018. Uh, but until now, my application is start uh, at the uh, Minister of Government uh, Minister of Education. I'm sorry. So uh, my question is, uh, why the system of the uh, scholarship is uh, kind of sus? I mean, like, uh, why why there's a uh, never ending of um, waiting? Uh, but uh, I knew that one of the Bangla uh, Saudi scholarship applicant from the 2022 um, uh, at this moment. Uh, he got the LOA and also the calling visa. So, I mean, uh, what is uh, in in a quote like, uh, you know, kind of kind of kind of strange for me. Uh, I think that's my question. Thank you, Doctor Wadi. Thank you, Mister Fadika, for question. Hello. Yeah, so I'm not really sure what happened with your application, but what I can tell you is that the, the website that I shared earlier, the study in Saudi, this is a new program. It was only established uh, last year. So perhaps that's why they were able to answer the um, your colleague or friend uh, quickly. But um, I would say if you can email them or if you can reapply again, since it's from 2018, it's been a long time. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, if you can try to reapply or uh, apply once more through the new website, I, I believe they'll be able to answer you very quickly. And if not, try to contact them and email them. Uh, you can also get in touch, I believe, with the Saudi Cultural Atelier, uh, the offices which are responsible for Indonesia. So I'm not really sure if they're based in Indonesia itself, but you can contact the ones in Australia or Malaysia. Um, and they'll be able to answer you as well uh, because they're the ones who deal uh, with those applications in the first half. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, uh, Mr. Repto, if not. 
Okay, thank you, Dr. Wahid Badawi. So we move to the question and answer uh, channel. Any one question from the Pelita Bangsa University, one of the university in, from Indonesia. Uh, the question is about the main focus of uh, education program from the senior university at Saudi Arabia, uh, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. And my ask about the focus on education program. Now at uh, senior university and all university at uh, this program uh, focus uh, detail about the artificial intelligence. Uh, maybe in the attitude of uh, management or uh, the design of modern technology. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome, uh, yeah. Dr. Wafi. May, uh, yes, I think the highlight of this question is about the main focus at the university program in Saudi Arabia. Like the university, maybe in Kia Abdulaziz is the, uh, if you want to highlight like uh, about the science and technology in Jamia Jamia Islamic University, uh, or Islamic University in Madinah is about the Islamic or Sharia studies. But I'm no, not. Okay. Thank, thank you. Uh, okay. So, so King Abdul yeah. Aziz University, uh, we don't have one focused program uh, because uh, so a lot of these public universities in Saudi, they're, the first aim for us is to educate or to be a university, a public university for the people living in the cities that they serve in. So King Abdulaziz University is the main university in Jeddah. Uh, we also have other universities in Jeddah, but King Abdulaziz University is the oldest and you know, the prominent one for Jeddah. Uh, so in the first, the first focus for us is the students who are graduating high school uh, who want to come and study uh, in King Abdulaziz University. Uh, or I mean, want to study in university. Okay. So we don't yeah. have a specific program which you know is our focus unlike uh what mr Ripta just mentioned the islamic university in medina you know of course they're really famous for their islamic studies and arabic studies um that's why we're able to offer scholarships for different programs so not just computer science but also engineering and all these uh, but unfortunately at the moment we're unable to open it for medical um programs uh so i would say we don't have a one specific focus uh, but I can tell you that we're really good in computer science. If you go, for example, on the Shanghai rankings website, uh, you can see that you know uh, our faculty of computing and IT were ranked top 50 in the world. Uh, and in maths, we're also doing really well. Uh, engineering, we're, we're still trying uh, because we just opened the program uh, as well for uh, females. In the past, we didn't have any female students in engineering. Um, so. Just to conclude, I mean, to answer that question, we don't have specific focus program in the university. We're just a public institution trying to have all the programs available. Uh, does that answer the question, I hope? Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the question. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, for the last, session we want to invite one again okay mr ardana okay assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh for the next question from abdul aziz ali sulaiman uh, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, mr wafi by the way i have a question um i am a high school in saudi arabia in mecca currently but not in uh, Madaris Papumia. I am in a uh, Sharia, Sharia school, high school. And if I have, if I want to join King Abdul Aziz University, but not in Sharia college, can I have, can I still join uh, King Abdul Aziz uh, IT or any other college uh, other than Sharia? Or I have to take another certification from outside and join King Abdul Aziz University. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. Thank you. Um, I 
I'm not fully sure about the answer. I, I believe at the moment that unfortunately, no, you would have to take a course which is related to Sharia. You can't um, take a computer science course directly. Uh, but I'll try to find the, the correct answer and uh, and somehow communicate it to you. So if you also drop me an email with that question, and I'll try to find a solution for you and let you know. But at the moment, I can say that no, it's uh, it's going to be you know something related to Sharia. So just to give an explanation to everyone else, in Saudi education system, when you're in high school, you can specialize um, into a few different tracks. Right. So I'm not really fully sure about it, but how it is today. But at the time when I was studying, there was a science track and there was a, a theory-based track. So if you take the science track, you're able to study things in universities such as engineering, computer science, uh, medicine, and so on. And if you took the theory-based track, then you're only going to study uh, things which are theory-based like business, uh, law, and so on. You won't be able to take IT courses. Uh, and then we also have the Sharia track, which means you'll be going into Sharia studies or into Arabic studies. Um, but I know that with Saudi Vision, we're trying to change that slightly by offering some kind of conversion course. I believe this is what uh, Mr. Abdaziz is asking, but I don't have full information on it, unfortunately. But if you email me, I'll try uh, my best to find an answer for you. Yes, I am Sorry, I didn't hear that. Allah is a Sheikh. I mean, just I come off even as well. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Abdul Aziz. Uh, don't worry. Uh, don't worry, uh, Bapak Ibu, bagi yang uh, nanti ingin bertanya lebih detail ataupun ingin kolaborasi bisa email ya di DSR atau di tadi kami sudah drop uh, alamat email juga. So apparently we still have enormous question or topic be to be discussed as we see them. Uh, however, due, due to limited time, we need to end our discussion section today. Okay. Can I just ask answer the question in the chat because oh, I like okay, this okay, question. Okay. Okay. So okay. it's asking um, what is the minimum example for the English score exam? Uh, different universities have different scores, and if you go onto the program's web page or website, you'll be able to see it. But uh, I can tell you, for example, our master course. Um, this is inside information. Okay, so we first look at your grades for the. Um, in your transcript. And then finally, we look at the English one just to see, for example, if our program only allows us to have 100 students and 101 students apply, then uh, we do something called Mufadala, which means we rank the applications and the ranking is done through the English. Okay, Because uh, we, we understand and we know that you know, uh, not everyone has full proficiency in English. So we do have also some English courses uh, that students can take while they're at the university. Also, at the same time, I want to say that KU and other Saudi universities, they also offer uh, Arabic for non-speaker programs, which you can take alongside your studies if you're interested in learning Arabic. Uh, so just, just to answer that question. And it also says, are we to have a project proposal before we do our admission? I believe not, uh, but I can check and let you know. Uh, Sorry, I'll, I'll give back the floor to you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Wafi. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have finally come to end the part of this session in the International Webinar AI, Research and Global Academy in Saudi. Before I close this session, I would like to invite the, our speaker to give us some short closing remark or closing statement. Please, Dr. Wafi, by the way. Okay, uh, I just want to say thank you everyone for attending and for listening and for all your nice questions. Uh, I hope I answered uh, the questions that you have. And I'm very happy to see that a lot of you are interested in studying in Saudi. I would say, uh, if you have any more questions, please email me. I'm happy to answer them at any time. And if I don't know the answer, I'll try to find someone who does. Uh, you also have access to many different resources 
I'm sure the, um, His Excellency, the cultural attaché, uh, will also be happy to answer any questions you have about coming to Saudi. Uh, but we also have our Saudi culture attaché. Um, I'm not sure we have one in Indonesia, but you can reach out to the ones in Australia or Malaysia, and they'll also be able to help you to answer you in those questions. Uh, and in the end, uh, uh, you know, I just want to say, uh, and uh, I hope and wish you all very good success in your future. And uh, thank you so much for inviting me to give this talk. Assalamu alaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, uh, Dr. Wafi Badawi. Shukran lakum for joining us today. Thank you for the concise closing remarks. And we also want to thank you to uh, Dr. Badru Soleh, uh, Bapak Badru Soleh, PhD from the Edu Indonesian Education and Culture Atase. And thank, uh, please allow me also to some highlight point from this today international webinar. Like AI has been recognized as a key pillar of vision 2020 in Saudi Arabia. And also AI is seen as a crucial factor in modernize the economic and building technological capabilities. Thank you so much for all our participants to join uh, this international webinar today. Don't worry, we have a lot of event and we want to continue for this event, don't worry. And also we can uh, still uh, join in the WhatsApp group and keep in thoughts and see you in the next event. We from the international webinar event organizer say, uh, I'm so sorry, uh, if a lot of mistake and wrong from this event. And again, thank you so much of, uh, to Dr. Wafi Badawi and uh, Bapak Badru Soleh and also Muhammad Ardana as uh, my partner today for the this event. Thank you so much. Uh, we will, uh, Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mohon maaf Bapak Ibu jika ada salah kata dan hari ini dan semoga kita bisa kolaborasi di next event. Apabila ada pertanyaan boleh melalui Uh, email tadi yang sudah kami share atau boleh juga melalui email belajar berbagi id at gmail.com nanti kita akan bantu untuk forward dan juga kita akan bantu untuk teruskan semoga Bapak Ibu bisa sukses di kemudian hari tetap sehat selalu dan panjang umur banyak rezeki sampai bertemu di kesempatan selanjutnya so thank you so much for join us today this event Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh terima kasih Bapak Wafi Dr. Wafi and Bapak Badrus.